Welcome back. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 19, verses 11 to 17 today. Saul is uh, back in his bad mode against David. Let's see what happens. Saul also sent messengers to David's house to watch him and to kill him in the morning. And Michael, David's wife, told him, saying, If you do not save your life tonight, tomorrow you will be killed. So Michael let David down through a window, and he went and fled and escaped. And Michael took an image and laid it in the bed, put a cover of goat's hair for his head, and covered it with clothes. So when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, He is sick. Then Saul sent the messengers back to see David, saying, Bring him up to me in the bed, that I may kill him. And when the messengers had come in, there was the image in the bed, with a cover of goat's hair for his head. Then Saul said to Michael, Why have you deceived me like this? and sent my enemy away so that he has escaped. And Michael answered Saul, He said to me, Let me go. Why should I kill you? So the king's daughter, Michael, she reports to him, When David left, what did he say? Go ahead and let me go. Why should I kill your father? And also we see Saul is saying, why did you let my enemy escape? See, Saul Saul sees David as his enemy, but God is with David, and so Saul is afraid of David. But Saul is, again, he's so focused, he's, he's lost his way, he can only see with his tunnel vision, and all he sees is, David is my enemy, I must kill him. It's him or me, I must kill him. That's where, that's the thinking in Saul's mind. And so even that he would kill his, his daughter's own husband, the hero of Israel, the one who slew Goliath, that, none of that is entering into Saul's mind. Saul's mind is, I'm going to kill him. If he's sick in his bed, so much the better. Bring him up here so I can kill him. So again, we have uh, David falsely accused. David, instead of, of standing for himself, he, he flees. Uh, this man has declared him his enemy. Sometimes people may declare you or I to be their enemy. We may not be their enemy, but we may be seen in their eyes as being their enemy. And nothing we can say or do seem to make any difference. At that point, what do you do? You seek the Lord for wisdom about what to do or what not to do next. And many times we need his help for what not to do next. Many times the human, the human parts in us would come up and fight back and resist in defense and stand on our own defense and make a big protest. But that may not be, and it perhaps often is not God's purpose. God will have us go in a different direction. We may even have to move thousands of miles in his service. And that's okay. That's okay. The Lord can be with us anywhere on planet earth. We can serve him and let him deal with the bullies. And he will. And we don't need to be happy about how he'll deal with the bullies. We just need to trust him. Vengeance is his. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, again, we look to you. We recognize that sometimes in human relations, we come into these crunch times when we're viewed rightly or wrongly as somebody's enemy, and we can seek peace. David, uh, instead of fighting back, David is, is stepping, stepping aside. He's stepping back. Sometimes and many times that perhaps will be your plan for us. So now, Lord, again, help us to trust in you. In the big, grand, bigger, larger scheme, uh, trusting in you is more important than having our rights recognized or having our viewpoint vindicated. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. Please be our helper in these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I have found that we can trust in God all the time, and you'll find that too. He is on the side of all of his servants. May he bless you today.